Let me start with a bold statement. I believe that good governance has never been more important than it is at the moment. Dr Victoria Hearth from the Cambridge Institute for Sustainability Leadership said in the last couple of weeks, put simply, governance is the way we do things. And I absolutely agree with that. Governance is the way we do things. And it's a way that has served us very badly. It's a way that needs changing so that we look at mission-led, values-led ways of incorporating both current and future generations. Good governance must enable individuals, communities, organisations, countries, and even globally through institutions such as the UN to help deal with the poly crises facing up. And it must also help us do that in as easy a way possible. I'm standing here in front of a slowly turning globe. This globe knows no country boundaries knows no territorial discussions, knows no wars, but it does know storms and droughts and wildfires and desertification. It does know massive migration. It does know pandemics. It does know the consequences of human behavior. And on this chart of overshoot days from the Global Footprint Network, you will see that here in the UK, we exceed our land and sea available to us in May of last year. And by exceeding it in May, it means we're using at least two and a half planets worth of resources. Whereas the worst country on this chart, Qatar, is using eight. Now, how can we have a livable world if we carry on using way more resources than we have available. We have to focus on how we can make less, more and better for current and future generations. And what we would hope to see if we were successful in this is that we all note that we live on one planet and that we all have a duty as human beings to recognise our role in natural species in protection of that single planet home of ours. What I want to focus on in this lecture today is how in one small country, the smallest part of mainland UK, three million people, 10 million sheep, Rethinking our values has enabled us to rethink what governance could look like. The story starts in many ways back in 1999, and we always have to know where a story starts and a journey starts in the context of knowing whether we're going to deliver the outcomes we want to see. So in 1999, devolution came to Wales and a new democracy was born. A new assembly that became a parliament was born. But the most important aspect for this story is that that assembly agreed to act in a way that honoured the Brundtland definition of sustainable development. Development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. Adopted by the UN, that is still the most significant definition of sustainable development that operates across countries across the world. And there was a new duty that was introduced in 1999, where the new incoming government and parliament of Wales had a duty to promote sustainable development in everything that it did. And it was really hard to deliver because how do you promote sustainable development? So fast forward to 2015, 
And it became absolutely clear that promoting is never enough. Promoting is like marketing. You can market a product, but it doesn't mean people will change their actions. But with the Wellbeing of Future Generations Act in 2015, we now have a duty to deliver in Wales, to deliver on seven goals that are linked to the Sustainable Development Goals, as you can see in this chart, but very importantly in governance terms, five ways of working are on the way of the Act. Thinking long term, thinking preventatively, collaboration between organisations, integrating outcomes and involving people about whom decisions are being made. So uniquely, not only is Wales the first country to have a legal mechanism to deliver on the Sustainable Development Goals, but it also has the how, the five ways of working, as well as the what, the goals, on the face of the Act. And those goals linked to the SDGs are very clear in the idea that this is a cultural revolution, this is a societal revolution, this is an environmental revolution, and this is an economic revolution. Because nowhere on the slide of the words of the goals that are on the face of the Act will you find the word growth. What you will find is the idea of prosperity within environmental limits, of safe communities, of a responsible country globally, of health outcomes that are not linked to the performance of the health service, but to the health of the population. So a very different concept leading subsequently to different decisions. And of course, there must be accountability. So there's a future generations commissioner. There's an auditor general who audits public services uh, and therefore has had to change their way of auditing to reflect this approach. And of course, the courts, because this is a law to judicial review. So when you have new governance, you have an opportunity to create new decisions. And it's immediately clear particularly to somebody like me, who was a minister uh, in the Welsh Government till 2011, and had been both an education minister and a climate minister, and very strongly supportive of initiatives, for example, to ban smacking. We couldn't get it through then, but following this new legislation, banning smacking in the interests of current and future generations sailed through the Parliament. The 20 mile an hour as a default limit across the whole of Wales, not just because of the emissions reductions, but because it improves the safety of pedestrians, because it brings down air pollution, all of those elements. So we're always looking for co-benefits. And you can see other initiatives, whether they're linked uh, to nature and the environment or agriculture or renewable energy, uh, or very importantly, how we deliver what one planet looks like in the context of Wales. And one of the big initiatives that came out of this, but not a government initiative, has been the One Planet Standard, created so that organisations which are committed to the idea of being responsible and behaving as though there is only one planet available for use, can support and deliver against a standard which both tests what they're doing, why they're doing, how they're doing and ensures that it is independently verified, but it works in an individual context where no size fits all and therefore enables organisations across the piece from whatever sector to demonstrate good governance in practice. And part of the reason that I'm standing in front of you today is because I have been given a totally new challenge in terms of being asked to bring together a group to look at how Wales could meet net zero by 2035, according to the Wellbeing of Future Generations Act. 
Now, what is interesting about this, it's a formal agreement between the Welsh Government and, by, and Plaid Cymru, one of the opposition parties, and between the two of them, there are two-thirds of the members of the Welsh Parliament, or Senedd. This formal agreement uh, means that Wales is once again leading the way. What will pathways look like, 10-year pathways from 2025 to 2035 that look at the impact on society and sectors of economy, that aim to be fair, uh, aim for a just transition and aim to be nature positive. But because of the Wellbeing of Future Generations Act, it's not just what we're doing, but how we are doing it. And we're doing it in a way that reflects those five ways of working. So we are deliberately collaborative. We are integrating outcomes. We're preventative, we're long-term, and we're looking at how we're going to involve people in the decisions that we make and promote to government. We're doing it through challenges, the, the four key challenges around the big emit emission areas, transport, food, energy and buildings, but the very exciting opportunity about education skills and the future of work. But of course, we don't do this in silos, although government often does. We have to think about all those other aspects, the impact on nature and the opportunities. How do we get the co-benefits? What's engagement and communication like? How do we future-proof? How can this be financed? What does governance and regulation look like? What new laws do we need? All those aspects we're going to have to into this very complex picture. And we're particularly keen to deliver on that duty of participation and engagement, involving people about whom decisions are being made. So that all the way through our work, whether it's through our individual reference groups working on those big emission areas, they are involving many people. There is open evidence gathering uh, in terms of contributing to our thought processes. There's academic work underpinning our thought processes. We've talked to experts across the world, but we're also talking to young people in a range of communities in Wales and more widely. We're working with a set of partner organisations that when we've got something to say, we'll be using those partner organisations to spread those messages far and wide. Partner organisations such as the Hay Festival of Literature, uh, not somebody you'd normally think of in the context of climate change, but actually how we bring together our culture, our society, our environment and our economy is not just about science and politics. It's about how we can ensure that people in their everyday lives can understand why they might need to change, but what benefits can happen to them in their daily lives because of those changes. So it's really important that when we're doing this kind of key collaborative message, that actually we engage as much as possible before we go back to government in terms of looking at how we take this agenda forward. So very simply, on this bullseye chart, we're there, right in the middle in the public spotlight. We've determined our challenges based on scientific uh, evidence and scientific and academic evidence is informing us all the way through from the Wales Centre for Public po Policy, a very well respected uh, ESRC funded impact centre. We are designing into what we do uh, participation and engagement that tackles those cross-cutting domains. We're doing this in the framework of the Wellbeing of Future Generations Act, but also going back to that slide on our ecological footprint within planetary boundaries. And planetary boundaries is right at the heart of the Welsh legislation. We started this work at the beginning of 2023, and we'll be delivering our outcomes in July of this year to the Senedd. But there is a moment at this particular moment where until the middle of February, any organisation that wants to give us evidence can go onto our website uh, and give us evidence in any of those areas, but particularly in the context of the cross-cutting domains. Because what we want this to be is actually 
an opportunity for a small country that's already demonstrated leading in this area to actually also demonstrate that it is possible to achieve pathways to net zero reduction in a fair and transparent, in an ethical and nature positive way. And what is interesting across the world at the moment is no matter how many countries have signed up to global agreements in terms of 1.5 degrees, which of course we exceeded on many occasions in 2023, that actually what we're not seeing is this kind of planning, 10 year planning in this decade, which the scientists are telling us is the most important decade for action. If we're actually going to create a livable planet for current and future generations. And as a mum and a granny, I really care about that. And I'm sure everybody listening can think of the youngest person they know and the oldest person they know in their own families. And they can think of what lives they will want for the youngest person they know. And I think it's hold that thought always in the context of making sure that the decisions you take in your everyday life, whether it's about heating, buildings, how you travel, where you go on holiday, what you eat, what energy sources you use, every single one of those decisions we can take at an individual level that contributes towards better outcomes for us all. And that's critical because if we look at Professor Donella Meadows, who's one of my absolute heroes, she published the book The Limits to Growth in the 1970s and said at the time that if we weren't careful, we were going to exceed the capacity of the planet and the planet had a capacity to exceed. And if we act the way we have been acting, then look at those three statements. The world for all practical purposes has no limits. If we act like that, the result is collapse. If the limits are real and there's not enough time, which is very much the kind of situation we're in at the moment, because we've known what we have to do for a very long time. We've had climate legislation in place in the UK, which used to be a global leader on these things since 2008. So if the limits are real, but there's not enough time, the result is collapse. Because of course, people try and extract as much as possible and contribute to many more emissions. So the only way forward is for us to realize that the limits are real and they're close but there is no time to waste, that we act today and not tomorrow. And that way we create a sustainability revolution to a much better world. And that cannot be done without good governance. I love this quote back from 1979. You know, who is holding back rapid movement to the better society? Who is responsible? for the mediocre performance of so many of our institutions. Not evil people, not stupid people, not apathetic people, not the system, not the protesters, not the disruptors, not the revolutionaries, not the reactionaries. The real enemy is fuzzy thinking on the part of good, intelligent, vital people and their failure to lead. The real enemy is fuzzy thinking. So if we think about that notion of governance, simply put, being how we do things around here, then actually, do we not all have a duty to try and make that better? To be part of creating governance that is good for individual organisations, good for communities, good for countries, good for the world? And I think that if we think about where we can have impact. Our little country of Wales, three million people, 10 million sheep, the first country to have a legislative commitment to future generations, the first country, therefore, to actually tie that legislative commitment to the performance of all its public services. What 
can the rest of the world do in the context of their own countries? At the moment, there are a range of countries that are looking at legislation on similar lines. Scotland is consulting on this at the moment. Ireland plans to consult on this. There are movements in Northern Ireland that are very strongly supported by the civil community in terms of taking this agenda forward. Other countries are part of a well-being economy. And the first United Nations summit for the future will take place in September of this year. But what do we want to do when we're thinking about good governance? New decisions come out of good governance. I talked earlier about new governance and new decisions. Good governance can help organisations take new decisions that are more appropriate for our times. And would you not want to work for an organisation which was honest, which was evidence-based according to the science, which was transparent, clear and understandable in terms of its aims and objectives, actively was looking at being fair for current and future generations, was prepared to be accountable both to the people who work within it and anybody it deals with, to make sure that what it does is meaningful and ethical. I know that what we're seeing at the moment, which really excites me, is organisations such as Student Organising for Sustainability are finding that actually 75% of students in some institutions want to work for exactly those kinds of organisations. They want to work for organisations that are contributing towards better outcomes. In 2023, climate change was the word of the year for young people. Climate change is horrendously scary, particularly for young people who may not feel that they're in a position to do anything about it. But it is also the opportunity, like never before, to demonstrate what governance can look like. And when we think of what good governance as a mission looks like, I think the Wellbeing of Future Generations Act, which I'd never propose countries should adopt wholesale in any way whatsoever, but actually the principles behind it, good governance linked to sustainable development goals agreed across the world. Good governance linked to the idea that what you do and how you do it should be on the face of legislation for every country. That there should be accountability measures such as the commissioners, such as audit processes, such as the courts, so that countries are demonstrating to current and future generations how they're prepared to hold themselves to account. Because, of course, the Welsh government is not excluded from this. One of the things I was keenest to promote in the development of the legislation was the Welsh government had to be accountable to the commissioner, to the auditor general and to the public, because that is the only way that governments will deliver their best if they are accountable to the same mechanisms they require the public to be accountable to. So let's go back to these five ways of working. How you think for the future. If you make decisions for today to repair a problem of today, you're making downstream decisions that may mean that the problem gets worse. But if you always have to think long term in terms of your decision making, if you think of this almost like a, a fiduciary duty, a shareholder duty where the shareholders are the human population and in fact the whole of nature population, if you have to think long term for current and future generations that enable us to live on a livable planet, then the decisions you make will be different. If you have to think preventatively so that you're causing, rather than looking at 
how problems are managed individually, you make sure you look at the causes, so you cause better outcomes by looking at what creates good health rather than responding to sickness. If you involve people about whom decisions are being made, then you get greater agency from people. Always when you consult people about what governments are doing, they say they don't understand how or why decisions are being made. They want more involvement. So how do we create more opportunities for more people to be more involved more of the time? How do we integrate the outcomes so that actually those goals for Wales linked to the Sustainable Development Goals, the seven goals of Wales, the 17 Sustainable Development Goals, that we can get the co-benefits so we can demonstrate that what we're offering is a better life, where less is more and better. And how do we make sure that we collaborate, not just between one or two organisations, but at all sorts of different layers? What does multi-party collaboration look like? These are all big governance challenges. And that's why I feel that good governance has never been more important. And I am delighted to bring this challenge to the GGI and others about creating good governance for current and future generations. Thank you very much. Diolch